What's up creators? Patrick here with the Let's Create series. Welcome back to our Roblox tutorial where we work on a card game. Today we're going to work on showing and hiding the find game frame. We're going to add the left and right frames, the left one for scrolling through available games and the right one for creating a game. We're going to use a module script that will handle and manage the frame. We'll call that module script from the local script and connect to the find game button. And then we'll tie it all together with the close frame button. So when we test it out, we'll be able to open the frame and close the frame. So we need to be able to find a game. We need to be able to create a game. Then that'll all be in the find game frame or frame find game. So here in frame find game, let's press the plus next to it. And we will add um, another frame in here. And this will be, yeah, so we'll have one on the left, one on the right. So we'll have two frames in here. Uh, so the first one will be the left panel and so we'll rename it so this will be frame game list frame game list so then we can position this frame game list um, so its position is not going to be zero zero we want it to have a little bit of padding and so we could either hard code this with offset which i don't really like to do or we can use scale so position x scale uh, we'll do something like 0.1, and that's 10%, and I think that's going to be too big. It is way too big. So we'll do uh, 0.025. I think that's better. Um, and so that's 2.5% of the width. The next thing we'll do is go to position Y, and um, maybe 0.25, but or 0.025, uh, maybe a little more, maybe 0.03. So that gives us our position on the scale uh, is X is 0 0.025 and on the Y is 0 0.03. And now we need the size. And so the size is basically going to be half minus those padding on the left and right. So the left padding is 0 0.25, 0 0.025. I'm going to say the middle padding is going to be something like 0 0.05. So that leaves, so if we have 0.25 here, Directly from the center, right, the center of the of the parent frame, whoops, undo that. The center of the middle frame, there's going to be 0 0.025 on the other side, so that's a total of 0 0.05, leaving 0 0.95. Um, no, hold on, hold on. 0 0.5 is the whole thing, and we need to take off 0 0.05, so that's 0 four five is going to be the width so we have size x scale on the find game list uh, size x scale will be 0.45 ah i see we have an offset yep we gotta get rid of those offsets there we go and so that is the same on the left and right from the center so that's good and the y scale we have 0 0.03 on the top we're going to have 0 0.03 on the bottom and so that comes out to 0 0.06 um, 100 minus, you know, uh, well, 1 minus 0 0.06 or 100 minus 6 uh, will give you 0.94. So on size Y scale, we can change that to 0.94 and we can get rid of that 100 for the hard coded value. And that'll give us the same size from the bottom to the top. So the padding on the top matches the padding on the bottom. And if we go to mobile, we'll see that it's the same. So we have a nice border around it on mobile and on desktop. So that part's good. The next thing we need is the right frame. And so the right frame will be like a create game. So we'll add a frame to frame find game. We'll add a frame. And then I'm going to change its name. I'll leave frame there, but then we'll say create game. Okay, and now we need to position this. And so the position on the Y, the, the scale can be the same, 0.03. And that'll drop it to the same uh, Y position as the other one. Uh, but on the other side, so this is 0.45 plus the padding on both sides gives it an even 0.5. But we need to go over 0 0.025. So it's a lot of points, but here's what it basically is. The X position for scale is 0.525. And that'll give you... Um, from the center, that same padding on the right. So the next one we need is the width. And the width is going to be the same. So the size on this frame, so size X scale, is going to be 0.45 again. 
Uh, but that that extra space is because of that 100, so we'll get rid of that 100 offset, and that'll give us the same width frame as um, the left side. And the last thing here on the size and position of this frame is the um, size, Y, scale, and offset. So offset's going to be zero as always, and scale is going to be the same as the other one. And so that was 0.94, and that gives us two frames of the same width and height. And then we can make sure that it works on mobile as well, and it does. So we have our find game frame, um, which we'll have on the left is like the list of games, and on the right is a way to create a game or host a game. So the next thing we need is a way to dismiss this. So we need some kind of X button or a close button or something like that. Um, and so we have a couple options. I mean, we could put it here at the bottom, kind of offset from the from the bottom of the frame, um, or it could be at the top right. I, I know that's pretty common. Um, so for now, I think we'll do top right. So on the container, on the parent, frame find game, let's add an image button. So we have an image button here. Um, this is going to be, I'm still gonna keep it as uh, in the name, I'll start it with button. And so it'll be button close. So that'll be like the close button, right? So button close. And so we need position and size. So the position is going to be um, pretty much all the way at the end. So we'll do something like 0.98 on X. And on Y, it actually needs to be sort of negative. So we'll do like negative 0. Point, um, I don't know. Let's try 0, 03. Yeah, actually that, that moved up a pretty decent amount. I think we want it to be a little bigger though. So here's what we'll do. So we're going to change 0.98 on the position X scale. 0 0.98. We're going to change that to 0 0.95. So that'll move it over and allow it to be a little bigger. Um, and instead of minus 0 0.03 on the Y scale, let's make it minus 0 0.05. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So... This close button, we have position X scale is 0 0.95, and we have uh, position Y scale is negative 0 0.05. And so that should move it all the way to the right, uh, but back a little bit, and then you know up a little bit from its parent. So that's good. Now we need size, and we don't want this 100 by 100 in the offset. Um, we want something like uh, 0.1 maybe. Mm. Hold on, 0 0.05 would just put it to the end. Um, yeah, I think we need 0.1. And then get rid of that 100. I think that's still too big. Let's do uh, 0 0.05, I guess. Yeah, 0 0.05 is fine. So size X scale, 0 0.05, offset 0. And then size Y scale, um, we went up uh, 0 0.05. So we actually need to go... It's, it's um, height needs to be bigger than that. So otherwise, it looks like it's way off the frame. Um, so this is going to be something like, hmm, let's see, 0 0.075. Is that big enough? Let's see. Yeah, it sure is. Um, so button close. Um, maybe, maybe we make it a little bigger. So it looks like maybe... Uh, you know, maybe a square. So 0 0.075, I don't know, let's do something like, uh, I don't know, 0.1, is that too big? No, 0.1 is fine. So we'll do 0.1. So that gives us the X, the Y on position, and the X, the Y on scale. Um, so now what we need to, or I'm sorry, on size. So now what we need to do is put an image here, right? Because right now it's just this uh, default image. So we can use the toolbox for now, and maybe we'll create our own assets later. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and open the toolbox. And you can do that uh, by pressing View up top and then finding Toolbox and selecting it. We don't want a model. We just want an image. And let's do something. Let's like uh, search for clothes, I guess, is fine. I mean, we do want some kind of red X. Um, I guess this one's fine. I'll just use this one. So I'll, you can right-click an image and copy asset ID. 
And then back in your button close, you can go all the way down to the image section and just change the image to the asset ID and Roblox will do the rest. So when you press enter, it takes care of the rest for you. And so now we have like an X button. So now we have an X button, but it doesn't do anything. So we need this X button to be able to close the whole frame. And so that's what I like these module scripts for. So I have a module script in here. I'm going to open that. And now what we're going to do is capture some of these um, UI elements that we need. And so the first one is pretty easy. It's just going to be the container frame and that's this module scripts parent. And so what we'll say is local uh, container frame equals script dot parent. So that one's easy enough. Um, and so this is, um, I'm going to put a comment above it. And this is uh, frame find game. So that's that one. Um, we also want access to that close button. So we'll say local close button equals, and this will be container frame dot button close. So that'll give us the close button. And now we want this module script to be able to handle things like we can say uh, module script close the frame or open the frame or things like that. So we need we need methods for that. And so we can do that by defining um, you know functions and, and properties and things like that that this module frame uh, module script can operate on. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say module dot open. And then that's going to equal a function and we can just press enter. So module dot open equals function with parentheses. And then when you press enter, it should automatically give you this end. And maybe we'll change open to something like um, open frame or show frame. Let's change it to show frame because then the other one can be hide frame. So show frame. So module dot show frame equals function. Um, and then it gives you an end. Beneath that end, we're going to do the same thing, but hide frame. So module dot hide frame, and that'll equal function. Um, open and close parentheses, and then press enter, and you should get the end. Um, so this one is going to um, change the visibility of the container to show. And then our hide frame is going to do the opposite. It's going to change the visibility of the container to hide. And so we actually already have um, a reference to the container. So what we can do is say container, container frame dot visible equals true. And then we can do you know, basically the same thing here in the hide frame, we can say container frame dot visible equals false. And so that's good, easy enough there. Um, and now we need this uh, button close to, um, you know, handle when a mouse clicks it. Um, so we have a way for the module to show um, the container frame, we have a way for the module to hide the container frame. But when, now we need this close button to be able to be clicked. And um, we need to make another script under this frame find game. And this needs to be a regular local script because it's going to handle UI. So we have this module script. We need a local script. And this will be the um, frame find game. Uh, normally I call these like GUI managers, but I'm just going to call it manager. So frame find game manager. And this needs to uh, require that module script so that it gets instantiated that first time. So we can do that by saying local behavior equals require. And this can be script dot parent dot frame find game behavior. And so that'll require that behavior. And now we can um, do things 
like opening and closing and, and updating and changing and all that stuff, anything we define in there. Uh, but the benefit of doing it in a module script is we can just require it in other frames. Um, like let's say when we have like the waiting for players frame, we can just require this module script and we don't have to grab more references to the different UI components. The module script does it all for us and all we gotta do is call met, uh, certain functions. So it's excellent. But for now, um, we could just go ahead and um, go back to the behavior, which is that module script. And we can go ahead and assign a mouse button one click action on this close button. And we can do that simply by saying close button dot mouse button one click. And then if you make a, like the, a colon and just with a capital C type connect, we can connect a function there. And all this function is going to going to do is um, set the container frame dot visible to true. So container frame dot visible equals true. And since we required this, um, it has been instantiated. So now if we run the game, it should work. Um, but we need to hide the parent frame first. So we'll go back to the base plate and we will click on this frame find game. Oh no, we can leave it on actually. Um, let's go back to this uh, behavior um, and let's change this mouse button one click from visible equals true to false because this is a close button. So we'll say false. And so now when we run it, we should be able to click that X and it should make the uh, the frame disappear. And that's all we're looking for. So when we press the X, the frame disappears. Perfect. So we can press stop. And now we see that this, uh, this connection is there. Everything's good. And we have this module that's ready to be um, expanded on as needed. Uh, but for now, um, we have this frame find game manager. Hmm, let's see. Maybe I'm, I'm wondering if we should move it up one. And it should be um, kind of like your basic everything manager. I think we are going to do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab this behavior here. Nope, not the behavior. Leave the module script where it is. But we're going to grab this um, frame find game manager, which is the local script. And we're going to move it up as a sibling to the container. So if you just drag it into the screen GUI, then you'll see we have screen GUI and the children there are frame find game manager, which we're gonna change the name. We have the container frame, frame find game, and then we have the button find game. And now um, this game manager, we're going to rename to GUI manager. And the benefit here is now we can grab everybody's um, behaviors and now we can kind of tie them all together um, so that's excellent so we will have an issue here though because script.parent um, it needs to go into the, its child um, you know frame find game so right after script.parent let's change this to frame find game and then that should be good there so we have frame find game and then that goes into the frame find game behavior perfect so we have this behavior um, in the GUI manager, we require that script and we can test to make sure everything's fine by pressing play. And this should let us just, same as it was, we should be able to just close by pressing this X. It closes, everything still works. Uh, but now uh, what we can do is grab that find game button, right? So we can say uh, local find game button equals script.parent. Oops, script.parent dot button and this is why I like to use like button first right I just type button and now I can see what you know what my options are and it's button find game so that's perfect and now we can connect to that mouse button one click right so we can say find game button dot mouse button one click we press colon and connect and this will be a function and then all we have to do here is say behavior dot show frame and we have like um, 
what would be called IntelliSense telling us what our options are. So show frame, boom. And so now if we press play, we can close it. And when we press find game, it'll open. So we have close and open, close and open. So that's good. And so what we'll do, um, so after this mouse button one click on the manager, I mean on the behavior, which is the module script, under here, I'm going to do some initialization. And this is basically at game start. What are some things we want? Well, we definitely don't want, as soon as the player joins, this frame in their face, right? So what I'll do instead is, as soon as this frame, um, the game starts and the player has this UI, uh, we're going to just make sure this container frame dot visible equals false. And so we have this initialization that just makes sure it's not at the start of the game, make sure that frame is not visible. And now when we press play, it should be gone. And when I press find game, it should show up. And then when I press the X, it should go back away, right? So I'm in the game, I press find game, it's there. I press the X, it goes away. Everything works as, as expected so far. And so the next thing we need, so we have this GUI manager, which basically just it's going to tie everything together, but for now, all we have is one frame. The benefit of separating things out into different scripts is when you have a problem, you don't have to go through 300 lines of code. You can go through, you know, 20 or 30. So that's the benefit of separating responsibility. Uh, but we have more UI work to do. So we'll go back to base plate. And we need this list. Um, well, we need it to be a list for one. So what we can do is go to uh, the create game list and we can add a scroll view. We need a, a scroll. Oh, it's a scrolling frame. We want a scrolling frame. And so this frame, we want some space at the top for like a label, uh, but then we want it to fill the rest of the available area. Um, so the top, um, you know, deals with up and down so vertical so that's y so x is unaffected so we can go to this frame we can go to size x and we want it to be scale one and offset zero and that'll make it the entire width of its parent uh, but the next thing we want is its position y so position y scale um, let's let's let this take up like um, 80 percent of the available height so we'll do 0.8 nope 0 0.2 point 0.8 will be um, its height so its position y scale is 0.2 so 20 percent down and then its size y scale will be 0 0.8 and the offset will be zero and so this will make this scrolling frame take up 80 percent of the height it'll be down 20 percent of its parents height and that'll allow us to put a label up here to kind of give this frame a title. And now when we press uh, like the mobile view, we'll see that everything still looks okay. Um, even if we press play in the mobile view, uh, we should be okay still. So we press play in the mobile view. We land like, like we're playing on a phone and we press find game. We do notice that find game is behind the jump button and that's not good. So we're going to have to move it. Uh, maybe over to the left more or maybe right under the player uh, but for now we have find game and we have the x and we can hit them both and both work so that's good let's go ahead and stop we'll go back to desktop mode um, and um, we're going to name the frame so this will just be called um i mean I, its parent has a has a name so let, we don't need to scrolling frame is fine um, but we do also want a label. So let's do a text label. Uh, this text label can go ahead and just take up the uh, remaining space. Um, but this will be called label title. And its position on X will be zero, Y will be zero. So both of those are fine. But its size on X, uh, it's going to take up 100% of its parent. So that'll be a one on scale. And its offset will be zero and then it's y scale the the remaining amount after that scrolling frame is just 20 percent. so we're going to do 0 0.2 and its offset is zero and so that will take up the available space and then we can do that text scaled thing again so if we scroll all the way down we can change it to text scaled and we'll see that that looks more like a like a title 
and we'll change label to like um, uh, choose a game or something, right? Or available games. We'll call it available games. So available games. So that's our left panel. And now we basically want both of these things in the the create game. No, nope, we don't. We just want the title. So let's copy this. We can do that a couple ways. So we're going to click on label title and we can right click and press duplicate. And then we can take that one and drag it up to this frame create game and that'll put it there. And now we have that title with all of the same properties, right? Like, so it's position, it's scale and stuff like that. Um, but the only thing is we don't want it to be available games. We want it to be create a game. So we have available games, we have create a game. The last thing I want to do before anything is get the, the other components in here um, real quick. Well, not quick, but, um, you know, as fast as reasonably possible. So that scrolling frame, let's go ahead and click it. And we want to add this thing called a UI list layout. So type UI and then look for list layout. The nice thing about this is it's going to put everything in a uniform, nice um, list, basically. And that's excellent. So now as we start adding things to this, like, like text button, it doesn't matter what we add. We'll see that as we add it, they just get stacked on top of each other. Um, so we don't have to worry about things overlapping and stuff like that. You don't have to add those text buttons. We're, we're going to delete them. I was just showing you what UI list layout does. Uh, it goes really well in a scrolling frame because as the content grows, your scroll frame grows and users can scroll up and down. It's great. It does all the work for you. Um, so that UI list layout is good. Um, the other thing we want is this frame create game. Uh, we want to add another label and a button, right? So let's do that. So we'll add a text label and we'll rename it label description or label info. Let's do label info. Oops, I forgot to capitalize the I. So label info, and we also want a button. So that will be a text button. And this button will be button create. So I'm renaming it to button create. So now we have in the frame create game, we have button create, label title, which we copied from the other frame, and label info. Label info needs to move down about 20%. So it's position. So down we know is vertical, and that is Y. Um, so position, Y scale. Let's do 0.2. So we move the label down 20%, and we want its X scale to stay zero. And we'll go to the size, and we want its size X scale to be one, 100% of the width of the parent, and its offset will be zero. Uh, we want its Y scale to be point, not eight, because we want room for a button. So we'll do something like 0.6. And it'll take up almost the entire space. And we want offset to be zero. That'll give a little more room for a button. Um, and so we're going to move this button down into this little available area down here. And so we can do that by selecting button create. And we can move it down. Um, so we have this as 0.2 and this is 0.6. And that tells me the available space left is 20% because 0.2 and 0.6 is 80. Uh, so we have 20% left and um, the position here is 0.8. Um, so what we can do is move our button down. Uh, it could be 0.8, but um, I'm thinking maybe a little more, right? So uh, maybe we do 0.9. We don't want to do 0.9. Uh, let's do 0.85. Yeah, that looks much better. Um, and then, so that's the position Y scale. And the next thing is size. So we have size X. Its scale is going to be one. We just want it to be the full width. And its offset is going to be zero. And that'll be the full width of its parent. Um, now we have Y. So this one's a little bit different. Um, we To keep it about how it looks now, we would make its scale um, 0.1, right? I think 0.1. And then if we change offset to zero, yeah, it looks just about what it was already. Uh, so that button create its position, um, X is zero, Y is 0.85. And then its size, X is one to fill the width of its parent. 
and um, its y scale is 0.1, so 10% of its parent. And now if we look at this at, on mobile again, we just top right, click mobile, we'll see that everything still fits well. You know, um, some things are bold and, and darker, but um, as far as layout goes, this looks okay. So we'll head back to desktop. So label info. Label info, let's scroll down to inf, uh, text where it says label, and let's type some placeholder text just so we know what this is going to do. We're going to say here is where we will, whoops, will explain to the user how to create a game. So this is like a placeholder, right? And let's change text scaled because we, we really like text scaled, except that looks um, way too big. But as we add more words, it'll, it'll be better. Um, and then button create, let's change it from just saying button to say uh, create. And then we'll change it to text scaled as well. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below. I'm Patrick, and we'll see you next time.